in the following demonstration, we'll take a look at a few beam meshing techniques. And we'll also compare the results to theoretical and to uh, brick meshed result. So we'll begin creating a brick meshed model. And because uh, we have two beams that we want a congruent mesh across, we'll create some mesh mating conditions that will ensure uh, congruent mesh across those two faces of those beams. Next we'll create our brick mesh. And I'm going to create them into two separate collectors. But for now, we'd like both of those meshes in the same collector because we're going to specify a single material for comparison to theoretical results. So here I'll choose 310 stainless for the material. Next we'll assign some constraints. Here I'll fix the ends of the beam. And we'll put a distributed load across the top face. And here we want the direction to be down, which is positive y. All right, then we'll go ahead and solve. And here you can see it just takes three seconds to run. Then we'll post-process displacement and stress results. So starting with displacement, you can see the max displacement mid-span is uh, about 23 thousandths of an inch. If we compare that to our theoretical results, we can see that we're within a tenth of a percent of the theoretical max deflection. So that result looks good. Next we'll take a look at our stress results and we want the stress mid-span. The max that we're seeing uh, is actually near the constraint and we want to see what that max looks like mid-span. So we can either select identify, you can see it's 498.72 in the um, dialog there or we can say show only after we create a group of that selection and turn on our annotations. We can see the same thing. We'll put that into our spreadsheet and you can see the percent difference is uh, about a tenth of a percent. Alright, so that looks good as well. Next we'll create a beam representation of the same model. I'll create some new simulation models and the same linear static solution. Next we'll create our beam mesh along an arbitrary but continuous edge of the beam. Here we'll assign our physical properties for the material and for the cross-section. So here the, the cross-sectional size of these two beams together is 2 by 2. And uh, I'll go ahead and name it that just so uh, we're not confused later which, uh, which is which because we're going to create some other cross-section, uh, another cross-sectional size for each beam separately in just, a, in just a moment. All right, now if we take a look at 
our beam cross section. You can see that the uh, centroid of the cross section follows the mesh that we created, but we actually want to offset it. But exactly how much um, may be a, a little bit of a math exercise. We can uh, eliminate any potential source of error from that math exercise by using a graphical offset. So what I'm doing is I'm aligning my beam coordinate system with my cross-section coordinate system so that we can see uh, where on the section we're picking, which is the bottom right-hand corner, and then I'll specify that same bottom right-hand corner on my geometry. So you can see the beam now is, is offset and aligned correctly with the geometry. All right, so there's our mesh on the top left-hand edge. Let's go ahead and uh, get the orientation in the sim, the same as it is uh, or was in the fem. This is where we're going to assign our loads and constraints. So first we'll put a constraint on the ends of the edges, or a polygon vertex. It'll be the end of the polygon edge that we meshed with our 1D elements. And then we'll put a distributed load on the, uh, the polygon edge that we meshed with the same load that we had assigned in our solid meshed model. All right, so there's our loads and constraint in our solution. Uh, if we try to solve We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get some results for our uh, steel beam meshed model. And we'll be able to see that our displacement results uh, match very well. Let's go ahead and check those with the spreadsheet. And you can see our percent error here is uh, also uh, about three tenths of, of one percent, well within one percent. And next we'll take a look at our stress results. In the same fashion we'll go ahead and create a group of the mid-span elements, say show only and turn on our annotations. And you can see our max is uh, 499 and a half PSI, uh, which uh, matches perfectly with our theoretical results. All right, so next we'd like to see uh, what happens if one of these beams is made out of a different material, and what would be the best practice for creating a, uh, a beam model representation of it. For the solid representation, we'll do that first. It's a bit more straightforward. Here I'm uh, going to go ahead and save as the original solid meshed uh, fem and sim as a new fem and sim, so we can maintain those old results. I'm going to drag one of my meshes into my other mesh collector that I created earlier, and I'm going to assign aluminum uh, properties for the other mesh. All right, so now we'll still have our same loads and constraints we're ready to solve. And in another three seconds, we'll have updated results for our steel and aluminum beam. Now, let's go ahead and turn on the model there. You can see the loads and constraints and our results. We'll look at displacement first. You can see, as, as we'd suspect, the displacements are a bit larger, the stiffness uh, for the aluminum is a bit lower, uh, so we're having a bit greater deflection there. So we'll go ahead and record that in our spreadsheet. And in the same fashion, we'll go ahead and box select the mid-span elements to take a look at our stress results. Say show only to that group that we just created from 
our identify results and you can see uh, our max stress there and we'll go ahead and put that into our spreadsheet as well All right, we'll go ahead and save that, and then we'll go back to our original beam model that was all steel, and we'll do a save as on that. <clears throat> we'll give it a, a new name, uh, M for multi-material. And then we'll go ahead and create a new beam collector for our aluminum. And this, of course, will have our aluminum material. But uh, for the section size, it's going to be a bit smaller. We had created a 2x2 two two before. We want a 2x1 this time. So we'll go ahead and put in the dimensions, name it two by one. And we'll use that cross section for our aluminum mesh that we'll create next. Now here we want to make sure that we're going to select a unique edge that's um, on our other body that has our uh, aluminum material. So we'll pick the bottom right hand edge. It's a continuous edge as well that's important so that it, it will go the entire span of the beam. And we'll pick the same element size that we did for our original mesh. Alright, so uh, first we'll go ahead and adjust the cross section for our steel section. Once we've done that, we're also going to need to adjust our beam offsets because uh, since the size of the section has changed, the uh, offset also is going to need to be updated. So here we'll get our, uh, our model aligned with our cross-section axis. You can see uh, Y is up and Z is to the right in the cross-section preview. So we'll pick the bottom right hand corner of that. That needs to align with the bottom right hand corner of the uh, beam section. And if we make a, a bad pick, it's, it's easy enough to go ahead and specify a new one. And you can see right away that our cross section is not in the right location if we selected that top right hand corner of the, uh, the section. All right, now you can see it's in the correct location. And we'll do the same thing for the, uh, the aluminum beam mesh there. Specify our bottom right hand corner in the section corresponding to the bottom right hand corner in our model. All right, so that looks good. Now we've got two independent 1D meshes that represent the steel and the aluminum beams. We'd like to connect those two meshes. Similar to what we did with mesh mating conditions for the solid, we'll create a 1D edge-edge connection with RBE2's node-to-node. -node. And that will connect each of the nodes of each of those 1D meshes with a rigid connection. All right, then we'll go ahead and try to solve, and we can see that the model setup check stopped it because it found that there were some issues with those 1D connections, and it's recommending that we turn on auto MPC in our parameters. So let's go ahead and do that.
and then we're able to solve uh, without any errors in the model setup check. And we can post-process our displacement. We can see our max displacement about 41 thousandths. Corresponds uh, within 1% of our solid mesh. So that looks good. Let's take a look at our mid-span stress results. And we can see, uh, we'll go ahead and create a group of that selection and show only and turn on our annotations. And you can see we've got 675 for our max stress. Now you may not necessarily see that depending on what uh, your orientation of your stress recovery points are. You've got four, one at each corner. If you select maximum, that will assure you of finding the maximum stress uh, for that section. So we, we actually had the correct uh, stress recovery point just by, by chance there. And you can see our percent error is uh, less than a tenth of a percent. And that concludes the demonstration.